Yeah, thank you for sharing those stories. And thank you so much for uh, the youth's help today. Um, Reese and Ben, you did an amazing job. So um, I feel like I should probably start my sermon with a story about a sheep to keep on topic. So there is a place in Wales called the Gower, and it's one of my favorite places in the whole world. I even made up an excuse to take the families there like this time last summer. And this is because, to me, it feels like going back in time. Because there aren't fields and hedges in the Gower. It's all common land. This means horses, sheep, and ponies. They wander around like they own the place. Now, you have to be really careful when you're driving, because whenever you're driving, you might come across a cow or something sat in the middle of the road. On one occasion, when me and Dan were on our way to our holiday cottage, and it was getting a bit late, and we are a bit tired, and between us and our holiday cottage, there was a flock of sheep in the middle of the road. Now, thankfully, most of the sheep knew the drill and got out the way, but one managed to get spooked. And as it got spooked, it decided to take a course of action of running directly down the middle of the road. The only place it was in danger. We had to drive slowly behind this sheep for ages as it frantically tried to get away from us, taking up the whole road. It literally could have gone in any other direction, <laughs> but it kept going down the middle of the road. Eventually, it got tired and just kind of fell to the side, you know, went to sleep on the side. And we managed to get past. Now, the point of this story is that sheep actually aren't very clever, are they? <laughs> So what is God saying when he calls us sheep? <laughs> In the Bible, there are apparently over 40 references to us being sheep. We're not the sheep dogs. We're the sheep. God, oh, I think I'm really sorry. I hate this wrong. There, but you know what? Compared to God, the creator of the universe, we are like simple sheep. We get lost. We lose our way, not just as children. We do, we do things that aren't best for us. We stay up late watching TV shows when we know we need to get up early. We don't take the advice of friends or family or listen to the wise words of our parents. We eat food and drink that tastes good in the moment but doesn't fill us up and keep us healthy. We spend our time worrying and stressing about things that we can't fix. We get lost. In Romans 7, verse 19, Paul writes, I want to do what is good, but I don't. And I don't want to do what is wrong, but I do it anyway. If Paul can't get it right and is messing up and gets lost, what chance do we have? But thankfully, God already knows our failures. He knows our simple, sheepish ways. God knew we could never fix the mess that we have made through our sin, and God came up with a rescue plan. For me personally, knowing God is thinking of me like a simple sheep is actually a huge relief. Knowing that I can rely on God like a sheep would a shepherd. Can anyone think of perhaps something a shepherd does to look after its sheep? Anything? At all? What would a shepherd do? Joe, you like one. Feeds them. Anything else? What else does a shepherd do? Protects them. Yeah. He guides and looks after them. In the 23rd Psalm, it says, The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right path. For his name's sake, even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. So God is a lot better shepherd than we saw this morning. He's not losing people everywhere. I've been a Christian for 20 years, which I know to the youth makes me really old. <laughs> and, and in that time, I've been like the lost sheep we heard in that parable. I've wandered away from the shepherd. I've made terrible decisions. Or I've even thought that I've known better than the shepherd. As sheep, we have one job, to stay close to the shepherd, listen to the voice of the shepherd, 
And yet it can be so easy, can't it, to wander away following the distractions of this world. For me, when I find the world becomes a bit much and I start to get anxious, I so often choose to run away by escaping to watch some trashy TV shows that might distract me for a minute but make me feel worse in the long run. Or instead of listening to God and spending time with him, I scroll on my phone. I choose to run away into social media. Perhaps it's not social media or TV. Perhaps for you it's running into your work or some other way of having control rather than trusting the Good Shepherd. So we can all lose sight of our Good Shepherd. Maybe in small decisions or maybe we've done it in big decisions. But no matter how big mistake or how far we feel from God, the good shepherd, he will come and rescue you. Tim actually stole my example earlier, but I was going to talk about um, the new story of the boys that got stuck in the cave in Thailand. Did anyone follow that story? Were people following it? Yeah, it was mad, wasn't it? So to summarize, in 2018, 12 boys and their football coach got trapped inside caves in Thailand. They had been out exploring the caves, but suddenly um, rain cut off their exit. The group had strayed too far into the caves and didn't think about the potential rain. They were trapped inside the cave with their way out blocked by the flooded passage. Oh, the way out blocked by flooded passageways. Fortunately, an international team involving Thailand's Navy, the United States military, and British divers went on a mission to find the group. Now, we know the group was found and they were survived and they were brought back. And this is such an incredible rescue. What an uplifting story. The boys in the cave could do nothing. There was no way they could have made a way out. But experts made a way. Like those boys that were trapped in a cave, we cannot rescue ourselves from our sin and our shortcomings. The Bible says the wages of sin is death, but the payment is too high for us. Fortunately, we have a good shepherd coming after us, offering us the greatest rescue. And all we have to do is call on the name of Jesus, the greatest shepherd. Last week, the grown-ups upstairs heard from Gavin. Gavin told us that sometimes Christians can fall into the trap of thinking that we need to do our best and God does the rest. But as Gavin said, this is not the gospel. We are sheep, remember? We cannot rescue ourselves. So this parable, this parable is pointing us to the greatest ever rescue. The rescue of Jesus coming down from heaven to rescue us by dying on a cross for our sins so that our sins might be forgiven and we can be with God forever. And that's it. I just, maybe if we just close to pray and think about that. Yeah, God, I just thank you that you are the rescuer. Father God, thank you that no matter how far we go in big or small mistakes or however far we wander, that you are coming after us and that you have done everything. You have done enough for us. In Jesus' name, amen.